Now we are moving on to the next segment in set theory that's groups. In computers groups are used in coding theory and cryptography and in this lecture we will be studying about the basics of algebraic structure then we'll move on to semigroups then monoids. Algebraic structure. A binary operation defined on a set forms a structure. Something like if I have uh, a set of natural numbers and maybe the operation is, let's say it is addition. Then we can represent this in a form of a structure, something like this. N and the operation is addition. This is an algebraic structure. So we mean to say that this n is a set and the operation we are performing on that set elements is addition. So we can define maybe for subtraction on integers something like z which means integers and the operation is subtraction. It is not necessary that it has to be one operation it can be two or more maybe we have addition and subtraction on real numbers so we write it as real numbers and the operations are plus and minus now if these structures if they follow some properties then we give these structures some names let's say we have a structure maybe some s and the operation we are performing is some star which could be addition subtraction or anything and let's say this particular structure is following some properties maybe the first one is closure, which says that if you pick up any two elements, maybe some x and y, which belongs to this particular set, and if you perform the star operation on this, so x star y, if this also belongs to the set, then we say that the structure is following the closure property. The next is associativity. Which is if you pick up three elements, some x, y, and z from this set, and if we perform the operation x star y, and if you change the order x star y star z, if these two are equal, then we say that it is following the associativity property. And if the structure follows closure and associativity, then the structure is called semi group. Examples are suppose we take the set integers and let's say the operation is addition. This is a semi group. We can test it. Let's pick up any two random elements, maybe some 2 and 3. 2 belongs to a set integers, 3 belongs to a set integers. Now we perform the operation addition. 2 plus 3 becomes 5. Even 5 belongs to the integers. Therefore, it follows the closure property. That's done. Then associativity, let's pick up three elements, maybe some 2, 3, and 5. Let's add them. 2 plus 3. Or I could have done 2 plus 3 plus 5. So 2 plus 3 is 5 and 5 plus 5 is 10. Here 3 plus 5 is 8 and 8 plus 2 is 10. You see that these two are equal. Therefore, it follows this as well. And therefore, we call this uh, addition over integers forms a semigroup. How about subtraction? Integers over subtraction. Let's test it. If I take two elements, maybe uh, 5 and 8, if you subtract them, this becomes minus 3. 5 belongs to a set, 8 belongs to a set, and even minus 3 also belongs to a set. Therefore, it follows the closure property. How about associativity? Maybe if I pick up uh, 3, 2, and 8, 3 minus 2, minus 8, and 3 minus 2, minus 8. Here uh, 3 minus 2 is 1 and 1 minus 8 is 
minus 7. Here 2 minus 8 is minus 6 and 3 minus of minus 6 that is 9. You can clearly see these two are not equal. Therefore, it does not follow the associativity and this does not form a semigroup. For the same structure, if we have another additional property which says that uh, it has an identity element, then this particular structure is called monoid. Monoid has closure and associativity and additionally it has an identity element. Because it has these two, every monoid is a semigroup. But we cannot claim for the vice versa. Every semigroup may not become a monoid. Now here identity element in the sense if we take up any element for every element of this particular set, if you perform the operation with that identity element, maybe if you say it is E, this should give the same element X. Suppose if you think of integers over addition, the identity element will be 0 because you add any element with 0, it gives the same element. Similarly, for integers, if, if the operation is multiplication, the identity element will be 1 because 1 multiplied with any integer gives the same integer. Therefore, 1 is the identity element for multiplication. Suppose we have a set S defined on star. Let's say this is a semigroup. And there is another set, uh, maybe T over the operation star, uh, such that T is a subset of S and T is closed on operation star. If these two conditions are followed, then this particular set is called sub semigroup. You can think of an example like um, we have integers defined over the operation addition. This is a semigroup, we already tested it. Now think of even numbers over addition. Even numbers is basically a subset of integers and when you add two even numbers it results in an even number so this is closed under the operation addition so it is satisfying these two conditions therefore this becomes a sub semigroup for this semigroup on similar lines we can even think of sub monoid so if we have a monoid defined on star operation And let's say there is another structure, some n defined on the operation, such that n is a subset of the monoid, and secondly, n is closed on this particular operation, and finally, the identity element belonging to the monoid also belongs to this particular structure, then this is called a submonoid. 